Welcome to worship at Camrose United Church for Easter Sunday, April 9th, 2023. My name is Helen Reed, and it is my privilege to serve this community of faith as their minister. In the spirit of the living God, who reminds us to love all of God's people, we remember that when settlers came, they were met by others who were already here, already knew these lands, already lived rich and full lives based on ancient and proud cultures. This is the land we share. Camrose United Church is located on land encompassed by Treaty 6 that was a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Assiniboine, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Nakota Sioux. I acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. And I affirm my commitment to the principles and actions of reconciliation. On Good Friday, the body of Jesus was taken and laid in a borrowed tomb. A stone was rolled to cover the entrance. Friends did what they could before the Sabbath began, planning to return at sunrise on the third day to carry perfumes and spices to honor him in the rituals as their own. Before then, there were two long nights to endure. They returned to their houses to follow their rituals, to pray and reflect upon their role and wonder what they had done what they should have done. In these dark hours, the Spirit of God was around, among, and within the people. Their faith in the holy gave them courage to discern, strengthen, to move on. God was with them. They were not alone. seen the Lord, based on John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Mary couldn't sleep. She couldn't stop thinking about the terrible thing that had happened. She decided to get up. It was very early in the morning, but she wanted to go to the cave. They had hurried to put Jesus' body in there 
before the start of the Sabbath. Mary wanted to check that everything was in order and to spend some time there. Maybe then Jesus' death would sink in. She walked sadly to the cave. When she got close, she saw that someone had rolled away the large round stone used to cover the opening. Perhaps some of the other disciples couldn't sleep either. But when Mary looked in, no one was there. Then, as she peered through the darkness, she realized that Jesus' body wasn't there. Mary was heartbroken. The Romans had killed Jesus, and now someone had taken his body. Now they couldn't even mourn him properly. Not knowing what else to do, Mary ran to find the other disciples and give them the bad news. They ran at once to the tomb to see for themselves. Simon Peter went in to make sure that the body was really missing. He found the cloth that Jesus' body had been wrapped in, but no body. The disciples went sadly home, but Mary stayed by the cave tomb and cried. She had loved Jesus so much, it was hard to imagine life without him. As she wiped away her tears, a flash of bright white from the dim depths of the cave caught her eye. She looked in. To her surprise, she saw two people wearing dazzling white clothes sitting in the tomb. They asked why was she crying, and she said, because Someone has taken Jesus away, and I don't know where he is. Then Mary felt as though someone was standing behind her. She thought one of the disciples must have come back, and she turned around. The tears in her eyes made it hard to see, but the man standing there wasn't a disciple. Perhaps he was a gardener. Perhaps he had taken the body. The man asked Mary why she was crying. Mary said, If you have taken Jesus away, please tell me where he is. The man said her name, Mary. And all at once, Mary knew in her heart that it was Jesus. She had no more questions about where and how. She was just overjoyed to know that Jesus was with her. She longed to throw her arms about him and give him a big hug, but Jesus told her to go and tell the others. Happily, she raced off and told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah. Our triumphant holy day, hallelujah. Who did once upon the cross, Sinners 
to redeem and save. Alleluia. But the pains which he endured, Alleluia. Our salvation have procured, bunnies? Why do we have so many bunnies and chicks and Easter eggs for Easter? They aren't mentioned at all in the story. We know that there are many stories in the Bible that hold secret messages. There are parables that Jesus used to help people understand things in different ways. And we know that how we understand these stories changes depending on who we are and where we are in our life. Easter is a story of big courage, of doing what is right, of trusting God to help us get through the worst stuff, of never giving up on God. It's a story of miracles and a story of hope. All of these things come together and through an unexplained experience, people found and find that they can move into living life differently of having different priorities, of living into a new life. This new life is what we are celebrating with the bunnies and the chicks and the chocolate eggs. This is the secret message that we need to uncover and remember. Spring, when we celebrate Easter, is a time of abundant new life. This is the time when new babies are born in the animal world, when creation bursts into green new shoots, when flowers burst into color through cold snow that seem to hold no hope of life for months. Jesus pushed through a hopeless time and brought new life and hope and color back into a world that needed all of those things. When death seemed to have taken everything away, Jesus, like those green shoots, pushed through the cold and showed people that hope brings about change and love when we figure out how to do it. The hopping bunnies, the fluffy chicks, the chocolate eggs, all bring us hope for new life brought by God. And hope is in the Easter story. Please join your voices and your actions with mine in a prayer that is a prayer of action and brings us to God with our prayers. God, today we hear the story of one of your best miracles. You helped Jesus show us how important it is to know you and love you. We want to learn how to be grateful for what you give us and to make better choices every day for you. God, we open our hands to you so that you help us use them to do good things for our friends and family and each other. God, we open our heart placing our hands to our heart so that we can make room for your love in our life 
and you can help us share your love with your world so that you can help us love. God, we stretch our hands into your world so that you can teach us to take care of our neighbors, even the people we haven't met yet. Jesus taught us to be brave and to start making good choices with you. We are ready to start now. Amen. Spices the body of dawn. See how the storm is rolled away, leaving darkness in the light of day. Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Who's in the tomb all clothed in white? Who comforts mourners alarmed by the sight? Who speaks in tongues so sweet, so dear, in a gentle voice familiar to hear? Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh, hallelujah. Seek the living among the dead. Released are you from fear and dread. Go now and sing your songs of elation. Go and tell the people of the nations. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Is the bomb healing desperate for sin? Yes, he is risen, risen indeed. That could not contain with two more grave. Christ reigns on high, our souls to save. Jesus Christ is risen today. 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 If we only pay attention to the news, even on a part time basis, it can be easy to find ourselves looking at each day as though it were Good Friday. A day with too much violence and distrust. A day where decisions were made under pressure. A day that was lived with confused people, with regret, with sorrow. Amongst all of that, living our call as Christians to be an Easter people can seem foolish, if not impossible. Why live in hope when the world has so much to spare? Because this is what the world needs. Hope heals and grows. Hope takes us into unforeseen, positive, life-giving possibilities. Hope opens our hearts for love to enter in, to be infused in how we approach each day and the people within it. We are not the first people to face the hurdle of moving past challenge into hope. When we look at the stories of faith that we uncover different meanings for each year, we know that we can learn to see the presence of the living God right here with us. Today's story reminds us that choices and changes in our lives will often involve grief. As we move into new attitudes, as we learn new things, we will often find that we need to say goodbye to old attitudes old ways of being, and that is hard to do. 
But today's story reminds us of being grateful for what we have, for seeing things through the lens of God, a lens of courage, a lens of love. Put yourself in this story and imagine the scent of a springtime garden at dawn, the confusion, the sound of a beloved voice calling your name. Would you find yourself opening your heart to possibilities or defending yourself against possible pain? Peter and the beloved disciple were still sitting in Good Friday. They only saw the empty tomb, the discarded cloths. They remain, remained in the dark because in that moment, without proof, they weren't willing to open their broken hearts to hope. Mary opened her broken heart to pain and allowed the light of God to enter her, to transform her pain into joy. In this moment of letting hope in, Mary's understanding and vision grew until she experienced the fullness of the resurrection, the truth and new life that God offers the world. The juxtaposition of these two attitudes, the fear of God's absence and the joy of God's presence, show us how we must be brave enough to make space for God's newness to come alive through us in the world. This pivotal faith story encourages us to live in hope. It doesn't deny the pain and the grief that had to be lived through, but it reminds us that God can lift us up from that into new life, into color, into promise. Mary opened herself up to what seemed so impossible when she experienced God's gift of love. She reacted with joy. She reacted by sharing the inspiration and the love. And bless her heart, she shared her news with a cynical community, probably knowing that they wouldn't believe her at first, that they would be resistant to hearing a new way of seeing and experiencing God. She shared because it was important. This transformation had to be shared to grow. The community eventually joined in her joyfulness and determination to live faithfully toward the hope that God drew her into. It wasn't easy. They needed to let go of old perceptions and lean into new ones. God, who showed that death did not end life, but created space for transformation, for healing, for love, would continue to work with those disciples and those who followed them. Through generations, God has continued to love, to teach, to inspire transformation and new life for all people. This is a day of great joy, gratitude, and deep appreciation for the love of God. This is a day when we may find ourselves overwhelmed with spirit, reminding us of the power of God to guide us into loving life and loving in life. Let us hear the songs of joy. Be the songs of joy in the world. Let's hop and fluff and add a decadent taste and color to life for the people around us. May we be unafraid to tell cynical communities that this and every day that God has given us has the potential to transform lives because God has the power. Jesus trusted and the spirit fills us with hope and faith and love. Please join with me in a prayer of thanksgiving for all of God's new days. God of love, miracle maker, storyteller. All of our days are given to us by you. We will rejoice and be glad. Jesus asked for your compassion and love for us, and every dawn reminds us that you remove the shadow of death. Every dawn brings newness to the world. Every dawn brings opportunity and possibility to the world. Every dawn brings new life. 
Give us faith and courage to honor the teachings of Jesus. Help us be strong to defeat hate, hurt, and sadness. For the power of the risen Christ is the power of love, and the power of love is the power of new life. Amen. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad. Singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, we will rejoice and be glad. Singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, we will rejoice and be glad. The story of Easter speaks to us of giving all that we have so that others may live. It speaks of doing the best we can to honor what God gives us. These shared stories invite us to stand with those whose stories we have heard, to hear well, to learn well, to live well, to share well, so that others may experience joy and hope with us. As we share this story of faith, let us remember to honor our God with gifts and love for God's world. Spread the good news that Christ has arisen, the seal on the prison of death is undone. Spread the good news, let joy be the token that bonds have been broken and new life is won. Shake off the dust from your feet, grace to tell all whom you meet. Hear the good news that God is revealing, how hope becomes healing for sorrow and pain. Hear the good news, take heart from the story, our grief turn to glory, Christ lives now to reign. Take heart from the story, our grief turn to glory, Christ lives now to reign. Spread the good news, that Christ has arisen, the seal on the prison of death is undone. Spread the good news, let joy be the token that bonds have been broken and new life is won. Shake up the dust from your feet, raise to tell all whom you meet. Hear the good news that God is revealing, how hope becomes healing for sorrow and pain. On this Easter day, when we remember that God can lift us out of despair into new life, into hope, into love, we share a meal with God.
Through the power of God who creates miracles from the ordinariness of life, who offers us connection and hope in so many ways, we join together in spirit, in faith, in love, with family or friends, in solitude with the love of God, with neighbors we know and neighbors we don't know, all of us loved by the one who loves us all. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. In this moment of giving thanks for your presence with us in all things, we remember that your story did not begin with that first Easter morning, but began when you came to move over the waters of creation. We remember the tragedies that came to your people, and we know you were not silent. You gave your people a promise. You gave your people a rainbow. You gave your people a song. You gave your people peace. At the table, in the garden, at the foot of the cross, at the empty tomb, serving you in the world in all places, we pray to you for the sick in body and mind, for those in sorrow, for the poor and lonely, for the oppressed and abused, for the health of creation, for the health of our own spirits, and the courage and strength to love one another as Jesus loves us. Gathered here with us now, great spirit, speak to us through our scattered table settings. Fill these symbols with your peace so that we may find your peace within ourselves. Jesus taught that bread was meant to be shared and that all are welcome at God's table. Jesus asked to be remembered in the sharing of the bread. In this sharing, in this welcoming, in this remembering, we celebrate God's gift of life. Jesus taught that bread was meant to be shared and that all are welcome at God's table. Jesus asked to be remembered in the sharing of the bread. In this sharing, in this welcoming, in this remembering, we celebrate God's gift of life. Jesus taught that all of life is woven together and that love is why we're here. Jesus asked to be remembered in the sharing of the cup. In this weaving together, in this loving, in this remembering, we celebrate God's gift of life. Let us pray together. Eternal God, as you invite us to this banquet of love, we remember that the church has a purpose. To nurture faith and comfort hearts to share gifts for the good of all, 
to resist forces that exploit and marginalize, to be fierce love in the face of violence, to defend all human dignity. Loving the world as you do, as Jesus taught us, may our actions be the instrument of creation's mending. Amen. Holy God, we know that nothing can keep you from us. As we gather our hearts together in love, we ask that your spirit be poured upon the bread and fruit of the vine we each have before us. As we share this moment with you, may we taste the bread of life and know the refreshment of the new covenant, blessed by your love. Amen. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Let us join our voices together in prayer as we gather all people of the world to our hearts and we sing together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory Because of God's gifts, we gather in this time and place we share bread for the journey. The fruit of the vine, the cup of blessing. And we pray. Holy One, Holy Three, you invite us into newness in so many ways. We remember that God loves us, that Christ teaches us loving ways in all of our days, that the spirit of love inspires us to be our best always. May our eyes be open to the presence of God beside us, as we trust in the one who has promised to love us and lead us always. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is always with us. We are never alone. Thanks be to God. Let us go from this place to live, breathe, and be the new thing that God is doing in the world. Let us continue to search for truth, understanding, and wisdom so that we can faithfully be God's welcoming presence in the world. Joy comes with the dawn, joy comes with the morning sun, joy springs from the tomb, and saddens the night with the song, joy comes with the dawn. He 
Weeping may come, weeping may come in the night when dark shadows cloud our sight. Joy comes with the dawn, joy comes with the morning sun, joy springs from the tomb, and sad is the night with the song. We are grateful for the light of Christ, shining into all of the corners of the earth, loving us where we are, and guiding us to where and who we are meant to be. Know the loving Spirit of God. Breathe it in. And know that God is with us wherever we go. Amen. Amen.